Let us prepare for worship. Thank you, choir. Congregation, please stand if you're able. Oh, that God would tear open the heavens and come down. Be alert. Keep awake. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Our hymn is number 81, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. Thank you. 
People of God, let us unite our hearts in the prayer for this Lord's Day. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening danger of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day, where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Like a faded dry leaf that the wind blows away, our sins dry us up. We become faded, brittle. We are carried off by the wrongs that we have done. Yet God loves us still and is able to restore and to renew us with the water of life. Let us confess our sin unto Almighty God, trusting in God's promised mercy. Let us pray. God with us, even in Advent, we confess that you seem far away. You are hidden when we need you near. In our hurt, doubt, and fear, we do not try to draw closer to you. Instead, we lash out against you, our neighbor, even those we love. Forgive us, we pray, and come to save us. Let your face shine until our tears are dried, our sins are faded, and our hope is restored. After all, we belong to you, and in your hands we can be made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us take a time of silent prayer. The grace of God given to us in Christ Jesus strengthens us to the end so that we may be blameless when Christ comes again. Thanks be to God who is faithful and has called us into the fellowship of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear and believe the good news of the Gospel. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Please stand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be. The peace of Christ be with you. Now hug up. be with you.
Thank you all. Children, come up to the chancel with me today. All the way up. Good morning. Have a Pez. Please have a Pez. Just one. Who didn't get one? Hello, girls. Hello. Well, good morning, children. Today is the first Sunday in Advent, which means that Christmas is getting closer and closer and closer. And now, it is one of our customs to light an Advent candle. And that's your job today. Now, what I'm going to endeavor to do is light this accoutrement. So stand back because your children ever play with matches? Never ever play with matches. And adults have to be very careful when we use them. Now we have a new wick. Let's see how this goes. It's going quite well. Now, let's light this first purple Advent candle. Yeah, you got it. Let's see if it's going to stay lit. Give it a little extra help. And then we carefully put that out. This first candle has a name. Do you know what its name is? Its name is Hope. The first Sunday in Advent, we remember hope. Now, what does it mean to hope? Any ideas? I bet you know how to use this word. How would you finish a sentence saying, I hope. How about, I hope that I'm on the good list for Santa. <laughs> Is that true? Some people here might say, I hope today's sermon is short. Hope means that you look to the future. And in looking to the future, something that you desire happens. I hope that I get my trains up for Christmas. I hope that I stay well and that you all stay well. I hope that I have strong faith in Jesus Christ. I hope that I never let Jesus down, but I do. Today we especially remember one particular hope. I hope I get to see the day when Jesus, who is in heaven with the Father, comes back to judge the world and all that is sin, and that all that is hurtful, and all sickness, and all disease, and death will be no more forever, because Christ will be fully reigning. Kind of like we talk about when we pray the Lord's Prayer. We talk about it in confirmation class. We pray that it would be on earth, just as it is in heaven. So children, I invite you to hope. I invite you to have in your hearts the greatest desires for love and faith and grace and wholeness and health. I invite you to have high and holy hopes that are well-pleasing to God and will bless your lives abundantly. And you know what else? 
I do hope that you're on Santa's good list. Don't forget it. Let's have a prayer. Gracious Lord God, thank you for these children. And for this day, we thank you for the candle named Hope. Fulfill our hopes and make them holy hopes. Bless us abundantly with strong faith, with committed love, with a vision for justice and peace. Oh Lord, we look forward to your coming again in the clouds. Come Lord Jesus. Amen. Children, you may go to Sunday school. And we will stand and look to the east. be seated. Would you bow your heads in prayer with me? Gracious God, heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will not pass away, for your word stands forever. May our generation be attentive, so that by the power of your Holy Spirit, we remember your ways and gladly do right, meeting you wherever and whenever you appear. In Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson is from the book of Isaiah, the 64th chapter verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways, but you were angry 
and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. The epistle lesson comes from 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 3 through 9. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will always strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Here also the Gospel, as it comes to us on this Lord's Day turning to the 13th chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, reading verses 24 through 37. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that He is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. In the evening or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. Here ends the scriptures for this Lord's Day. May they be a blessing to our hearts. Amen.
Thank you, choir, for your beautiful music. Grace to you and peace from God, our Heavenly Father, and His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. It is the first Sunday of Advent. A new liturgical year is upon us. And as we begin this journey, the gospel that comes to us on this particular Sunday is given to us by Jesus Christ as he teaches us about the coming apocalypse. And the message most refined and most succinctly stated, the message that Jesus Christ has for us as we begin this, this sojourn through this season of Advent is these words, Keep awake. Keep awake. Keep awake. Now ordinarily when we begin reading a book, we don't start in the middle. And this passage in the Gospel of Mark comes dead set in the middle of the Gospel of Mark. Usually when we begin with a book, we start at the beginning, although I know there are some of you who like me, like to read the end first just to see where we're going to get to. But today, we're instructed to take a close, attentive look to this chapter in the Gospel of Mark, this apocalyptic vision of Jesus Christ. What is it that he's saying to us, and why is he saying it? Jesus, with his disciples, have just left Jerusalem. They have seen yet again the false religion being practiced egotistically and narcissistically in the temple. They have seen the imprint of Rome's heavy foot upon the children of Israel. They have watched the corruption, seen the corruption in preparing to go to worship and having to exchange money with the money lenders. They have seen all all that the city of Israel, the capital city containing the temple of God, has to show them. It's clear that as Jesus is going about leaving the city, he struggles with the wickedness of the society in which he is a part. He struggles with the abuse and the lack of justice. He struggles with the discord and the the lack of peace, he struggles with the impact of what he sees and hears and feels. Yet at the very end of this Gospel, before Jesus comes to this place in the Gospel, the last thing that he grabs hold of is a comment as he watches a widow go to worship God and in her stewardship she places tenderly all that she has into God's care the story of the widow's might and so Jesus leaves the city to go to the Mount of Olives this passage is called the Olivet Discourse and as he goes from the city impacted by his sensitivity to things which do not please God as he begins to ascend the Mount of Olives he boldly and strongly declares to his disciples this apocalyptic vision. This vision that after a terrible calamity comes upon Israel, a terrible sinful calamity, a judgment will occur and the Messiah, the Son of God, he himself will return in the clouds dispatching angels to the four winds, the four corners of the earth, and gathering up the faithful. Gathering them up and claiming them totally, finally, once and for all, as his very own. No one knows when that will occur. No one knows the season or the time. He says, however, that his word will not pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. But His Word, the truth, the veracity, the, the rock that He proclaims to them will not pass away. You can take it to the bank. You can count on it. 
not only with your life, but with your soul. It's important to remember that as he goes to this Mount of Olives, it is a place, as are so many places in Israel, rich of history and rich in prophecy. It was from this place that the prophet Ezekiel, looking down as he could from that, from that high ground, looking down on the city of Jerusalem, looking down on the temple courts, the prophet Ezekiel from that place saw an occasion when Israel so badly sinned that the Shekinah, the, the presence of God's very self, was seen by this prophet exiting the building, leaving the temple, ascending back into heaven. So our passage, our call to worship, oh, tear open the heavens and come down, is reminiscent of that occasion. When God went away from Israel, it was more than God could even stand. Standing in that place where Ezekiel saw and recorded his prophecy. Standing in that place that is the place to where the, the Messiah, the Christ, is to come and return. Standing in that place, Jesus says to the disciples who have become spiritually insensitive, who have become dulled, who have a, a case of spiritual neuropathy. He says, disciples, keep awake. Keep awake. Keep awake. In the next chapters, Jesus will himself suffer the passion. He will go to the cross and die for those he loved. But his vision on this occasion, as he's about to go through all that suffering, is not the cross. Remember that. His vision is the second coming and the judgment. He sees through the passion, through the cross, through the resurrection, all the way to his return and his judgment, the final ultimate victory that he will bring to earth. Keep awake. What does it mean for us to keep awake? It means for us to lay hold to the fact that Jesus said His words will not pass away. Cherish the Word of God. Cherish the Scripture. Study it to show yourselves approved. Put it into your souls, in your minds, in your hearts, and on your lips. It means to pray without ceasing, to stay intimately connected with God in your prayer life. It means to join together in corporate worship, to celebrate the sacraments. Our Lord welcomes all who come to His table to remember His broken body and His spilled blood. It means to sing the great songs of faith. It means to keep a perspective that is established in Jesus Christ who will come again. We don't talk a whole lot about it. There are denominations where they, they talk about it in great infinitesimal detail week after week after week. For us, it's enough to know that it will come. For us, it's enough to know and to say with the church throughout history, this Greek word maranatha, come again, Lord Jesus. What does it mean? To keep awake then for you. As I was thinking about this passage and all those classic distinctives that I just enumerated for you, something came to my mind. And I don't mean it irreverently, but something from my life about keeping awake came to mind. I have a two-year-old, two-and-a-half-year-old granddaughter that oldest granddaughter and I have a special relationship, grandfather to grandchild. And I kind of consider it as a grandfather part of my duty to teach her certain things, certain special things. Oh yes, I'm that kind of a grandfather. <laughs> One of the first things that I taught my granddaughter, as was taught to me by my grandfather and as my mother taught my my children, 
was the importance of knowing the Bronx cheer. <laughs> I taught my granddaughter to go <laughs> and not only did I teach her to do that, I taught her to do it on command. I would say a word and she will respond <laughs> think of the power that you have in doing such a thing with a two-year-old. Those occasions of state where you can say the word and get the response. Those occasions in family gatherings when you would dare to make such a comment but you put it on the kid. Now the code word that we use is Ishkabibble. How many of you have ever heard of Ishkabibble? Do you know Ishkabibble? Ishkabibble. Well, back in the 1930s, there was a performer, and he had as his stage name Ishkabibble. He was a comedic performer. He would sing these novelty songs, he would play the cornet. He was part of somebody's College of Musical Knowledge, I believe. Kay Kaiser, wonderful. We're in the groove, aren't we, with each other? <laughs> and he would perform, a matter of fact, his act informed Jerry Lewis, Jim Carey, why, even Mad Magazine. Do you remember Alfred E. Newman, any of you? What was it that Alfred E. Newman always said? What? Me worry? We're getting somewhere. I'm with the right people. <laughs> so when I say Ishka Bibble, she responds with the Bronx cheer. But did you know that the name Ishka Bibble came from a novelty song in 1913 that was enjoyed by our nation? And this actor, this performer, whose real name I don't remember, he did a rendition of this song, Ishka Bibble, and became so well known for it, well, he changed his name to Ishka Bibble. Yes, Ishka Bibble is our code word for the Bronx cheer. And Ishka Bibble is, in fact, a Yiddish expression. See, you learn stuff when you come to church. It is a Yiddish expression, and it goes Isha Gabibble, which in our language became Ishka Bibble. And it means, so I should worry? The right response to that spiritual neuropathy that gets so acclimated to a world in sin, a world that is crazy, a world that has acclimated itself to whatever goes, a world in contemporary parlance that, that people say simply, oh, whatever. The response to that Ishka Bibble is the Bronx cheer. Because you are Christian people. You are not people for whom anything goes. You are people of theological substance. You are people who live with and for Jesus Christ. You are a people about love. You are a people about justice. You are a people working for peace. You are a people that care about God's world and in the name of Christ Jesus. You are a people not dull, but who keep awake. And so on those occasions when we face a world go wrong by the grace of God given us and the power of the Holy Spirit we stand and we proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ in word and in deed and we know that the word of the Lord will never pass away. And we know that one day Jesus Christ is coming again.
Amen. As we prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion, please stand for our hymn, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart. On Communion Sundays, we use as our creed, the Nicene Creed, it's printed on page 34 in your hymnal. Let us confess the faith of the universal church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, 
and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Before we come to the table of the Lord, let us take a moment of silence and remember that which we are about to do. Our loving and gracious Heavenly Father, here we stand and sit gathered around your table. From this table we know your steadfast love endures forever. From this table we know that your word will never pass away. From this table we know what love looks like. As we gather, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for all of your blessings in life. We give you thanks most of all for the blessing that you give us in Jesus Christ. We thank you that he was incarnate and that he came to redeem us and save us. We thank you for his holy life, for his life-changing teachings for His miracles that show forth Your glory, for His tenderness and His grace, for His willingness to die on a cross for people whom He loved, even those who reject Him. Lord God, as we gather round this table, we pray that You would take these elements of bread and wine and set them aside from all common uses and make them holy in your sight and in their appropriation in our lives. We look forward to the coming of the Son of God. We look forward to Christ's return. We look forward to that day when sin will be no more and your creation will be completely about love, peace, justice, and full and abundant life. And so with the church throughout the years, we say, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, even as we take to our lips the prayer he taught us, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord took bread. And after having given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And in like manner after they had supped, 
He took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood, shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink ye all of it. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of your Lord, even until he comes. Elders. <coughs> Serve God's people. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take, eat. Serve God's people.
This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take, drink. Let us join together in the prayer after communion. We thank you, O God, for this holy supper shared in your love. Even as we have received this bread and cup from the table of our Lord, May we remember that we now carry the Christ into the world. Keep us strong in faith and steadfast in Christ's love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Elders, you may be seated. Let us bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Let us pray. Faithful God, we thank you that Christ is being revealed in every time and place until he comes in the fullness of glory. So strengthen our testimony, strengthen our spiritual gifts, increase generosity in us, we pray, as we wait for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with all those whom we offer up before you from our Insert those who are facing challenges of health or challenges of life. Be especially, we pray, with Mary Ann Taylor's family. Surround them with your peace that passes understanding. And here we present ourselves as we begin our Advent journey together. Make this your special time touching our lives. Hear now then our prayer as we offer it 
In Jesus' holy, matchless name, amen. Our hymn is number 39. Keep alert, keep awake. God is doing awesome things we do not expect. And Christ is coming near with great power and glory and with tenderness. And so may God strengthen us to the end. Christ draw near to our very gates. And the Holy Spirit awaken our spirits until with eager longing we greet the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.